Hey there guys, I'm Lee Williamson and today we're going to speak about post-production. Now this is about putting the animation that you've done into context. Uh, the context in this situation would be the 80s and Thundercats. That would have been like VHS recordings that were uh, recorded over again and a little bit of glitching and that old school fishbowl type TV and vibrant colors. So I just want to go through a couple of tips and techniques uh, that could get this look and feel. So without further ado, let's dig in. So this is a render straight out of Cinema 40. And what I want to do is just show you ways to really punch it up in the post side of it inside After Effects. And the first thing I want to do is I want to do some of my color adjustments. So I'm going to uh, create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to call this one Curves. And I'll go get some curves if I know how to type that. And all I really want to do is punch up the brightness and uh, the contrast a little bit by doing a bit of an S curve on the color editor. And the next thing I want to do is I can duplicate this. And the next one I'm going to call Vin for Vignette. And I'm going to delete the curves off that vignette. And I shall just drop another curves onto that one. This time around, I want to darken it quite substantially. And then also make it quite contrasty. And now I'm going to click on this ellipse tool. And it should drop a uh, mask over it. I'm going to invert that mask. And I'm going to add a bit of a feather to it. Now, this vignette is is what uh, will make it more like um, like it was recorded from an actual camera. So the best thing to do is also don't just leave it as it is straight out of the box. Uh, edit this a little bit and give it a more organic looking shape. Okay. And we could probably press T on the keyboard and just make the transparency a little bit down. Cool, so we've got that on there. So we've added the vignette, we've added some curves. And now the next thing we can do is, I'm just gonna turn these both off so you can see what we're doing, is maybe I want to do, uh, maybe uh, make some colors a little bit brighter on certain objects. So, so now the, the badge of the sword, I wanted that to be just a little bit stronger. So I can show you three ways we can do this and who knows, we can even layer them up. Um, we can create a new adjustment layer. Let's call this red curve. Let's just even make that red over there so we don't get it confused. And we're going to do one thing again. We're going to drag on our curve editor. And we're going to go into our red channel. And we're really going to pump up that red nice and high. And then what we can do is we can use our lips tool and draw over the area that we want to highlight. And what I'm going to do again is just make that mask a little bit more organic looking and then just add some feather to soften it. Cool, so that would be one way. I'm gonna turn the eye off on that one. Another way you can do is we can add a solid. We can go to uh, layer new solid and we're gonna make that solid red. And let's once again Put a mask over it. And so this one will be, let's call that solid or oh, red solid. And we can set our mode to add. And then once again, we can go into our fe uh, path feather and we can just feather out down now probably nicer to make sure the glow was well closer to to 
the eye of the sword really and who knows maybe it maybe it shone a little bit down down here and then shone a little bit up there and we can press t on our keyboard and maybe just drop the opacity down so we've got a nice little bit of a red glow and we turn the eye off on that one and then we can try another adjustment layer again so this time we'll call this one glow so I we'll make that red so I know what I'm looking at and we can go into our X presets drag that glow on here and now straight out the bat um, we want to change that original colors to ABC colors and we can change the white to a nice bright red and the black to maybe a dark red and then all we need to do is adjust the glow threshold and the radius of the glow so that it's nice and bright the intensity there we go and let's see what else can we do to that to make it a little bit more oomph right cool so now what we've done is we've added that red glow on there and what we could do is we could just lay up all those nice reds that we used and you know if we find one a little bit too strong maybe this is a bit over the top i can just press t on my keyboard and adjust its opacity a little bit further now i might not necessarily want this glow all the way through what if i just want it for that scene so i can click all these layers Shift Control D on the keyboard and delete. Actually, maybe just move it one more to the end. Cool. So that would just be for the glow for year. Cool. Now, the next thing I might want to do is I want it to look more like it was a uh, retro type of uh, VHS videotape. So we can add a couple of extra things. Uh, first of all, we could add some um, noise. Now, uh, sometimes you people have used uh, the grain uh, effect and it's quite uh, tedious to render. So let's go for noise. So if we click on the layer, file, new adjustment layer, just enter on this and let's call that noise. I'm going to put noise in yellow. Just lock all these other layers. Okay. And let's drag on a noise. And if we just bring the noise amount up, you can get a bit of grain. I'll put it on, probably not going to see it on this recording, but I'm going to put it on about seven. And if I zoom in, you can see it just gives a bit of grain as if it was real live footage. And, uh, Another one we can do is to give it that VHS tape, we can give it a quick chromatic aberration. I'm going to show you where to download this in a sec. File, new adjustment layer. Um, quick chromatic aberration. And we can just really just make it split ever so lightly we can put this on about um, 0.3 and um, just to show you where that is that's on a, a plug plug in everything .com and it's for free so i'll be sure to give you guys a link to that free download the next thing we can do is we can add an unsharpened mask so once again, new adjustment layer, uh, unsharpen mask. I like to just label these. Um, so unsharpen mask, unsharpen mask. Now, with the unsharpened mask, it just kind of makes it look a little bit more VHS tape looking. So if I bring that amount to two, three, five, 
1.5 and leave the threshold at zero. All it's done is it's really sharpened the image up and added all these nice little highlights on the video footage that really amplifies the uh, chromatic aberration. In fact, I can even put it underneath. Would it look any different? Yeah, so it's kind of like a bit of a mix of the chromatic aberration. And then another cool one I can do is uh, old school TVs had a bit of a, almost a, a fishbowl like effect. So let's show you how I did that. We'll add another one and we'll call this optic compensation. Right, so we add the optic compensation on top of that. And let's put it to about nine and press reverse. So if you, I turn this on and off, you can just see it stretching a little bit. I mean, if I really had to jam it out, you can see kind of what it's doing. It's just kind of giving a bit of distortion on the lens. So we'll have that on nine. Right, so let's turn all these effects back on. And we wanna make sure that they're all in the right order. So we can put the vignette right at the top, I reckon. Right. I'm cool with that. Let's lock all those layers. Now the next thing I wanna show you how to make um, a glitch effect. So we're gonna go create a new adjustment layer. Let's call this glitch if I can spell. Change that to green and find our turbulent displace. And we're going to change that to horizontal displacement. And pull the amount up to 450 and the size up to 31. And uh, jam the complexity up to 4.4 and then the, the key is to make sure that your anti-aliasing uh, is on low that definitely gives you the right look and um, what else can we make sure put it to the horizontal cool and now all I want to do is I just want this to be on one keyframe so I can just cut one keyframe of that glitch and delete the others so you almost kind of play through it and goes, or maybe even two keyframes. There we go. And who knows, maybe it'd be nice to put that glitch effect in between a frame transition. So it'd be at the very end and be like, or just across the two. So we can kind of rein in uh, one transition to the next, which is quite nice. Now, the next one I want to show you is the uh, damage tape look. So I'm going to take the uh, the video at the very bottom, you know, without all these uh, other effects on you. So if I just had to turn those effects off and we'll see Apple V, duplicate the layer and then Control Shift C and pre-comp that. So let's just call this uh, damage tape. And double click inside there. And first of all, I'm gonna add a little bit of noise to this. So let's just drag on some noise. And just jam up that noise nice and high. And we can add some turbulent displacement on it too. And you know what? Let me just take that noise, uh, keep a copy of it, file, new, adjustment layer. It'd be nicer to put them on adjustment layers that way I can stack them the way I'd like. And we'll just call that noise. And then we can add a turbulent displacement mat. So let's just call it turb. And we want to press Alt click on the evolution 
can make this play out. So let's put it on a thousand call, I reckon. So now we're in play, the turbulence displacement is, is moving along. Uh, heck, we can even add an unsharpened mask just like in the previous one. So adjustment layer, call this unsharpen and sharpen mask, whack that on there, bring it up nice and sharp, anything else to put on it, right, cool, so we've just created this extra effect here, now we don't need it to cover the whole screen actually, so I'm going to whack it onto a mask, just put a rectangle mask over the top there. There we go. And all we want to do is have this wipe over from top to bottom. So we can do that. We just have to animate the path. And maybe the path just travels for, I don't know, maybe about a second. So I'm gonna move that down to the very bottom. Now I'm not going to put any eases on you because this is quite a, a linear type of a wipe and you fairly want it to go quite slow over it. It's almost as if the tape is struggling to turn when it's playing in a VHS recorder. So here we go. And you can see the distortion happening inside there. And maybe we want to put it in a place that gives more like a secondary animation. I mean, you have artistic license to do whatever you really want with it. So who knows, maybe it comes straight after the sword wipe. It kind of comes in like that. Oh, wait, we shouldn't have dragged the whole entire clip. So it's just the uh, mask path you want to bring across. Cool. So there is a distorted uh, uh, damage tape wipe look. And uh, right, so if we put all these effects all together, let's get our damage tape wipe. At the top of this one too. What well, might be quite nice is actually to have my, I think my curves should have been above, um, above the vignette. There we go. And then, wait, where is that little glitching at the end? And we could probably add one more curves uh, to this. So let's add another adjustment, uh, and light curves. So it's really looking a bit washed out at the moment. Let's just pump that up a little bit more. And maybe we want to dull on that blue a little bit. Maybe the blue is too much. We can bring that up a little bit. Maybe we can bring some more green into the scene. And maybe my vignette is still too strong. So I'll bring my vignette down, down a little bit. Maybe it's just, um, needing a little bit more love to pull it out. Maybe it's just a little bit too harsh in there. There we go. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye.